Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to this hearing of the Budget and Finance Committee. Today's Monday, June 3rd, 2019. I'm Paul Krikorian, joined by my colleagues, Mr. Kretz and Mr. Price, and we are ready to begin uh, today's meeting. Um, members, uh, I would have suggested for consent approval items 7, 8, 10, 11, and 12 with um, a few amendments and so on. Um, but as we have cards on those matters, I just ask you to have a look at those and see whether there any required discussion as we take public comment. Uh, we'll go ahead and take our uh, multiple item speakers first. Uh, so I'd like to ask up first Mr. Herman, followed by Ms. Ramirez, Followed by Mr. Previn. This include general public comment, sir? No. This is only items on consent? Yes, your time's running. <clears throat> uh, since we have um, an issue with these. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. What are you Start his time over. Start his time over. Start his time over, please. I misspoke, Mr. Herman. I apologize. No, it's not just the consent items. It's all agenda items. So you, have, you can speak on all agenda items. Including general public comment? You're not saying? including general public comment. Go ahead. You see, ladies and gentlemen, why we have trouble here in these conferences, these commission meetings? You try to ask the right question, and as, as an insult, we get the wrong. We get the wrong. So... Difficult enough trying to gain your perspective and place. You know, all these trip and slip falls is a raw, bad result of Eric Garcetti, who's running a campaign to address children. But yet the homeless crisis czar is still on a crisis. So no matter what you say in this budget, we're always being in a crisis. So... Politely, I don't want to in, in, interrupt anyone's conscious mind. Gently saying, fucked up, E.E. -E. Really fucked up, E.E. -E. Why is it so fucked up? Because the city knows they're going to eventually be bankrupt as they continue to steal money and waste money and these criminals continue to corrupt the system. Matter of fact, they put a TRO hit against me. Matter of fact, they use a sergeant of arms back there with his, with his camera. The, with his the, camera. It, it deals with the budget. This is the budget, sir. And everything on the budget is relative to what I'm saying. That when you don't like a person, you put a hit on them. You use, you use a body camera like you're on the physical impact statement. Submit it. And what do you do with those cameras? You use it against the public. A slap. Strategic lawsuit against the public like Jessica Abrams, Kingling, Miles versus the City of Los Angeles, S&G. All this fucking shit is a result of Eric Garcetti, for the record, fuck you, 42 Thank USC, you. 1983. Previn. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. It's Eric Proven from Studio City. And uh, I wanted to raise the point about um, the budget. You got the fourth, fourth financial status report today. I noticed that um, the mayor had an opportunity to veto it, but we didn't have an actual meeting where we could ask him to veto it. And I was curious about whether or not we have enough money in the line for cleaning up the Civic Center and around City Hall. I found a budget item that showed about 300,000 earmarked for that. And I, I thought we should be increasing that in light of the discovery that, you know, the city has been sort of burying uh, reports about, you know, activity in and around the Civic Center that is both unwanted and unsafe. I mean, I think we are looking for a humane and hygienic solution, and I think you probably read the front page of the California section today about that, that we need to do a better job. There's all sorts of uh, problems, uh, and I think that we need to be diligent as opposed to deceptive. Uh, item 12, you always say, sir, and I always listen, that these items would that it, 
not for the public, pesky public, to raise the questions. You would just simply push them right through. This uh, item 12 is, of course, a refund for the great KPMG. Now, on May 3rd, I think we were entertaining uh, the KPMG uh, group because they were doing an audit for us, not an audit, a review, a friendly review, but for several hundred thousand, I, I couldn't look it up today, but several hundred thousand dollars, and it was the second installment of several hundred thousand dollars that they were reviewing our Olympics budget, and yet here they're getting a $500,000 refund, and when you ask the uh, Claire Bartels guy, Shahid Chaudhry, about that, he sort of talks quickly and doesn't quite explain why. And I think we all agree that we should know why we're giving them a $500,000 refund when we can't manage to afford to put um, mobile pit stops around. We want one in the Civic Center at least, and we should certainly have a place for people to use a toilet at the metro station in the Red Line where I live, where we've been asking the great council member from CD2 and also the vo folks at Metro. So let's try to do the humane thing going forward. Now, no general public comment today? Not, not just now. Make us wait all day? Fair enough. Thanks. All right, is no, okay. Mr. Spindler. Okay. So two minutes on multiple items. Mission number one, we have just City RT versus City of Los Angeles from a traffic account. Fuck you. Go ahead and settle it. All right, so Eudis Horton versus the city of L.A. Alleged damage of conditions. Uh, settle it. Number three, Joseph Nick Gravesh. Auto pedestrian accident. Settle it. Number four, Kligman versus the city of L.A. Easy, easy, easy. Settle it. Settle it, you schmucks. Number five, legal counsel called Miles versus the city of L.A. What the fuck is it about? Don't care. Pay them anyway. Number six, the city council's SG versus the city of L.A. Closed session, secret meetings, current price. It's so good. Go ahead and settle it. Federal and state tax laws with the Ice Ice Baby Miller LLP. Dun, 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 tuk, dun, dun. Ice Ice Miller LLP. Dun, 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 tuk, tuk, dun, 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 tuk, dun, dun, Ice Ice Miller LLP. That's right. You need them to provide legal services regarding federal and state tax laws because you ought to know how to defeat the upcoming money laundering charges and the sealed indictments at the Rybal building. That's right. So, yes, absolutely. Ice Ice Miller Baby LLP will get you out. He's the main gangster foe. God bless Ice Ice Miller. And the rest of this shit, I ran out of time. Thank you so much. God bless. All right. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Um, is there, um, is Antonio Ramirez here? I don't see her. That's the second call. Is there anybody named Greenspan who wishes to speak? Seeing nobody. Uh, that will close uh, public comment on all agenda items. And um, members on item Seven, I would propose uh, that we approve the city attorney's recommendations. Item eight, I would propose that we approve the city attorney's recommendation. Item 10, I would propose that we approve the CAO's recommendation. Item 11, um, there is a proposed uh, amendment to that matter, uh, which I'd um, ask the clerk to please uh, read. Um. Item number 11, the proposed amendment to authorize the controller to transfer $127,325 within the Department of General Services budgetary account as follows. From fund 140, uh, account number RSC5301 of $127,325 to the same fund accounts. 001101001210312100318 in the respective amounts of $9,000, $6,000, $112,325.
All right, thank you. And so with that amendment, uh, members, I'd recommend that this committee concur with the Information Technology and General Services Committee to approve the recommendations in the May 3rd, 2019 report and approve the May 28th, 2019 CAO addendum uh, with the amendments indicated by the clerk. And then on item 12, I would propose that we approve the Office of Finance's recommendation. Are there any uh, objections or questions or... All right, there's being no objection. Uh, it will be the action of the committee to, those will be the actions of the committee on the indicated items. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead then next and take up item number nine. Item number nine is the city administrative officer report relative to the year end or fourth financial status report for fiscal year 2018-19. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, committee members, my name is Maria Gutierrez with the City Administrative Officer. Today we present the year-end financial status report. It is our fourth and final uh, FSR of the fiscal year. Uh, the City began 2018-19 with a cautious outlook. Earlier this year, our reserve fund was lower than in recent years, and we projected year-end overexpending of approximately $98.85 million. Half of this projected overspending was attributed to sworn overtime expenditures. The city was able to manage the projected overspending and unbudgeted expenses, mainly through the use of the unappropriated balance reserved for mid-year adjustments account and from departmental savings. Throughout the year, the use of the reserve fund was mostly limited to loans to address cash flow needs and for the projected overspending and police sworn overtime. As a result, we anticipate that we will end the year with a reserve fund of 5.91% or $365.83 million. This is well above the 5% reserve fund policy threshold. Our cumulative reserves are at 7.63%, which is $472.51 million. This report identifies remaining general fund overspending of $14.48 million as well as recommendations to close the year with a balanced budget. Regarding revenue, based on our review of revenue data through April 2018-19, we expect general fund revenue to meet the revised targets identified in the 2019-20 adopted budget of $6.21 billion. While there are ongoing downside risks to various categories, including the electric users tax, business and documentary transfer taxes, there are no changes to the total revised revenue at this time. Regarding our expenditures, uh, since the mid-year FSR actions, our projected citywide year-end overspending has decreased from the 44.38 million after mid-year actions to 14.48 million. The projected overspending was mainly reduced because of the following. Uh, first, we anticipated that LAPD would realize approximately $10.4 million in savings from the conservation of sworn overtime funding available for standby, holiday, and emergency hours, and certain earmarked deployments. And second, we are no longer projecting nearly $16 million in cumulative current year costs for the Ardon settlement, emergency storm repair work, Proposition O unfunded positions, and the June 2018 elections. The Ardon settlement and some of these other costs will be addressed next fiscal year upon receipt of invoices or covered by special funds. There is, however, newly projected overspending. This newly projected overspending includes $4.7 million in Bureau of Street Services Pavement Preservation Program, and this is due to delays in the reopening of the Asphalt Plant 1. And there is a new general fund liability of $4.32 million to the Street Lighting Maintenance Assessment Fund. And this is due to technical errors within the financial management system and the city supply management system. We also continue to report overspending within the fire department and the office of the city attorney. This office recommends various actions to eliminate the projected overspending of $14.48 million through the year end. 
These actions mainly include the transfer of $11.24 million from the UB Reserve for Mid-Year Adjustments to various city departments and funds, and a $2.83 million appropriation from the Intergovernmental Transfer Grant Program to the Fire Department. Our budgetary actions, inclusive of those just mentioned, total approximately $178 million. This also includes about $41.1 million in MICLA reauthorizations for an additional year beyond the MICLA three-year policy for general services, vehicles, and equipment, and the Taylor Yard G2 interim use project. There is $7.61 million in reductions in the Special Gas Tax Improvement Fund appropriations, and this is due to uh, increases in the non-SB1 gas tax revenue shortfall. This is on top of the $13.44 million in reductions already taken at mid-year, which increases the cumulative shortfall to approximately $21.05 million. There are no programmatic impacts anticipated from this reduction. There is also approximately $34.39 million in 2019-20 general fund reappropriations recommended and $21.21 million in 2019-20 special fund reappropriations. The majority of the general fund reappropriations are tied to the homeless uh, bridge housing program that's approximately $18.5 million, and the fire department, which we are recommending $8.5 million in reappropriations. And lastly, we have approximately $38.94 million in prior year FMS encumbrances recommended for exemption from the general fund encumbrance policy, whereby any prior year encumbrances from 2017-18 or earlier are automatically disencumbered. We do have uh, some uh, additional uh, technical adjustments that we would like to recommend as an amendment to our report. Um, first, there is uh, adjustments that are being recommended to attachment five, page four of the CAO report. This is regarding an ITA transaction for hazardous materials disposition. There is a transfer of 56620 from ITA's operating supplies account um, rather than the communication services account. Uh, also, there is a transaction relative to the police department within the same attachment uh, involving the police commission video system. It involves a transfer of $250,000 to ITA. Um, we would like to replace the transfer uh, to take place from the communication services account rather than from the office and administrative account. Um, this amendment has been circulated and has been provided to your clerk. Um, and uh, I understand there's also uh, an amendment uh, requested by the chief legislative analyst, um, which has also been circulated uh, to this committee, involving the transfer uh, an appropriation of 50000 from... Uh, the council fund involving a salaries general transfer. And the second is regarding a transfer of the real property trust fund to the building and permit enterprise fund. So we would uh, recommend adoption of these amendments as well. Great, and just for the sake of the public people listening, that the CLA amendments are number one, to transfer appropriate $50,000 from council uh, account 100 slash 28 account 1010 salaries general to council 100 slash 28 account 2120 for printing and binding to better align with current expenditure patterns and two relative to the transfer of real property property trust funds to the building and permit enterprise fund reference and recommendations three recommendation three and page one of attachment five to the CAO report reduce the amount to two million six hundred thousand dollars those are the CLA's amendments. Um, so I have just one question, um, and that for you, uh, at least, and that is, uh, you mentioned the f reserve fund will finish the year at 5.9% of general fund, I think? 
Yes, 5.91 percent. 5.91 projection. What was the original budget uh, amount as a percentage? Do you do you recall where we started the year um, budget? I believe um, earlier in the year uh, when we uh, reported in the first FSR, uh, at the time the reserve fund was at 5.76 percent. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Members, questions for the CAO? Yes, Mr. Blumenfield. Okay, yeah, just a couple of very minor things. I appreciate uh, the report. The a couple of things. There's a transfer of 300000 from SDRF to salaries to offset the reductions in the gas tax. Mm -hmm. Will that money be replaced when the gas tax revenues go up or come in? Do you know? Um, I will defer to the budget analyst on this. That's too narrow. I can get a report back on that yeah. later. Now, culture here with the Office of CAO. So you wanted to know if it was going to be, be replaced back into SDRF once yeah. the revenue comes in. I don't believe so. They're going to cover um, eligible expenses under SDRF. Um, and then the other thing is the. Um, there's the transfer in animal services. Didn't quite understand how that works. It's going from the UB in the animal trust fund account to their revenue account. Is that it is, how we? It is going from the unappropriated balance uh, line item, uh, which was entitled the animal trust fund. It is going to uh, uh, reimburse uh, related costs, expenses, which uh, this this action was assumed as part of the council and mayor adopted budget. So this okay. pretty much it, just it effectuates was, what had already been assumed as part of the budget. That's what I was checking. So mm -hmm. it, it is what we were assuming then. It's not something, it's not a new transfer. Brian, no officer of the CEO, that is correct. Councilmember well, Pompon. I, I couldn't hear you. That is correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Anything else, members? The CEO? Okay, thank you very much. Um, all right, so members, um, now we have that time when we call roll, departmental roll call for questions that you may have. So, Mr. Blumenfield, do you want to start us off? Sure. I have a SDRF question, which is probably BOE, but maybe it's BSS. So maybe both. We're not. We're not bringing you up yet. We just. He's just calling the. You can ask. So it's one or two, some combination of those departments, sanitation and DOT, uh, and finance. Sanitation, DOT, finance. That's it. Okay. And I, I was saying the first one is, the is some combination of BOE and BSS regarding SDRF, but Adele's looking like he's going to answer, answer it, so then Okay. That's fine. So, but it may be engineering's BOE off the hook. Engineers are here. Engineering's off the hook, and we'll just count on street services. Then. Okay. Okay. Mr. Chris. So animal services, and I just thought of a question for the CAO also. Okay. So we'll come back to that uh, animal services. Okay. Mr. Price? Uh, nothing yet. I'll okay. So I, I think mine are covered. Um, just look. Oh, uh, I'd like to add street lighting, please. And, uh, yeah, that's it for me. I have questions for the departments already called. Okay. Any other departments, Mr. Price? Not at this time. I should say there is no BSS. It's now or never it's because they're going to they're gonna go. So. It's Streets LA, not BSS, since BSS is no longer a thing. Ah, uh, okay. Streets LA. All right. <laughs> yeah, do you hold, hold BOE? Uh, we will hold BOE, yeah, hold sure, that. sure. BOE for Mr. Price. Okay. All right. So the departments I have, members, just to confirm, are um, the former, the, the artist formerly known as Street Services, uh, sanitation, DOT, finance, animal services, street lighting, and BOE. Is there anything else? Yeah. And Mr. Kretz still has a question for the CAO. 
on gas tax. Anything else? All right. Uh, well, then, with that, if you were not among those departments called, thank you very much. We appreciate your coming down. Um, see you next time. Okay. And as they are quietly exiting the room so we can resume business, Mr. Kretz, you want to go ahead on gas tax before we call up the departments? Yeah, just a quick question. Uh, it's, I know it's difficult to get a handle on why the gas tax revenues don't usually meet our expectations, but I wonder if we could get something resembling an explanation of why that tends to be. Good afternoon, Selena Kuhn, CA, Office of the CAO. Sorry, I can hear your question back there. What was your question again? Uh, why our gas tax revenues uh, don't always meet our expectations? Um, for this year, well, we, in the 2018-19 in the adopted budget, we had based our estimates based off of the California City Finance. Um, they had estimated a 4% uh, cent increase in the um, rate, um, which, did not, which the Board of Equalization did not take um, effect this year. So that might have been part, uh, part of the reason for the revenue um, shortfall. Um, other reasons um, it could, um, other reasons may include consumption or um, a, variable, a variety of other reasons that we cannot um, just um, tell you what's the impact of those reasons. So are there patterns like uh, reduced consumption that we can anticipate continuing as we adopt more hybrids and electric vehicles, or it seems like there should be some way to uh, not underestimate this. Yeah, currently there are patterns, but we haven't um, been able to look at it um, and evaluate what the reasons are for the impact for this year. But I encourage but it could us be a variety, to... yes. It could be a mixture of electrical vehicles and also the gasoline prices and everything else along yeah. with it. Maybe we should be a little more conservative in our, in our estimates in the future since we yes. seem to so, miss this. Yes. So for 1920 adopted budget, we did um, go conservative. We did not base our estimates based off of the California City Finance estimates. So we did kind of estimate based off of this year's estimate. We've adjusted it. Uh, we did a reduction of 0.5% um, um, just based off of this year's estimates. Sure. So we, we are anticipating being a little bit conservative for next year. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Anything else for CAO? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, let's go ahead and start with street services then. Streets LA. Excuse me. <laughs> it's an official, official change. It's, you know. We do them business as. Hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, great. Uh, good afternoon. So the, the question I wanted to, to raise, and, and I may not expect an answer today, maybe we can do a meeting or report back, but it has to do with the SDRF. We made a major policy and a great policy in terms of recovering, getting full cost recovery on the streets that have been damaged, mm -hmm. um, that get damaged all the time by um, utility cuts, et cetera. Um, we're coming, and at the time we said we would do a six-month review, and we're coming upon that six-month review. And, and in the interim time, we're, we're hearing a lot of pushback from some of the, the folks who were paying that fee, saying that um, that perhaps we didn't take into account the increased restoration standards, or that the cost that we're charging is costing us more than the actual recovery. Um, and. From my perspective, that is a—it's an engineering question and a, and a street services question because uh, I think our philosophy is a very sound one, which is we need to recover. We can't secretly subsidize, or not secretly, but uh, unconsciously subsidize these cuts as we have been for years. We need to get the full cost recovery. So my question to you is, um, you know, what are, what are you? How are you reacting to to the different? Uh, questions that are coming up. Did we use the uh, 
Um, did we take into consideration the increased standards? Are we on track for getting a six-month review? And, and, and we may not have an answer here, and I know that we, can, we talked about getting some meetings together with the stakeholders, but I just wanted to, to raise the issue publicly because we do need to there's – there's a lot at stake on our end and, and on the utilities end for getting the things done, including the importance of getting us high-speed connectivity, which is also a goal that we all share. Sure. Thank you, Councilman Adele Hachkel, your director of Streets LA, and I have to get used to it myself, too. Uh, I have with me um, uh, Keith Muse, who has been leading the effort uh, on the, the uh, street damage restoration fee. Uh, we're working with our partners in the Bureau of Engineering, Ted Allen and others. And thank you for the Council for and Mayor for approving the SDRF. As you drive across the city, you see most of the damage happening is because of utility cuts and cuts. I mean, I, call, I got a call uh, uh, over the weekend about uh, uh, unsafe conditions on Wilshire, and I sent a crew to look at it, and it was actually a, a basically a utility cut that was backfilled not properly and has settled and caused a huge issue. So we need to take care of our streets, and the way we do it is through partnership. And I agree with you, Councilman, it's not, uh, you know, we need to work together. So we've been working very hard. Keith, uh, Ted Allen and I, working with uh, uh, President Kevin James and the Mayor's Office on listening and on the issues. But I want to assure you a lot of the issues raised are actually not fully accurate. Actually, the new standards for the trench is actually making things easier, but we will spend time, there is a meeting this Friday, to work through the issues, but I'd love to spend time with your office and with the stakeholders and to continue the dialogue to explain and figure out a way how we can streamline the process. Uh, that's important. Uh, Keith and his team is working on developing the work plan for next year, 1920, for paving. That would sort of help utilities coordinate their work so it makes it easier for them to minimize cost. Uh, you know, I think we are moving next year with your help on asset management to do a lot more forward looking, uh, to really look ahead, not just look for one year. That's going to help us tremendously. So we're working through it. I would love to come back to committee, your committee, and, and present that. Uh, I think we'll probably do it next two months or so, maybe in August after you return from recess. But in the meantime, we will spend time with meetings internally here on Friday. Probably next week we'll meet with the uh, utilities and continue the dialogue and hopefully under your leadership and leadership council and the mayor we can make sure that we are all talking the same thing and making things uh, easier for all of us. We want to be fair uh, both to the city and to the utilities. Right. No, and just getting, getting everybody to agree on the same set of facts. You know, sure. We pride ourselves in, in the city of Los Angeles. We can have differences of opinion, but we're going to actually – rely on facts. Sometimes that doesn't happen in the uh, sure. federal side of things, but that's another story. So <laughs> thank you very much. Sure. Anything else for street services members? Um, the only question I have is on the asphalt plan. Um, what's the current estimate for completion, getting that up and running? Uh, and um, if it's not functioning by June 30th, is that going to have ongoing effects in next year's budget? Right, right now, actually, this morning, I, Keith and I met with the Bureau of Engineering, who's managing the, the construction of the project, Gary Moore and his team, to go through the specifics and the schedule. Uh, one of the goals that we all have is to ensure we have a plant that produces a recyclable plant, uh, asphalt 50-50, and that's what we're trying to ensure. We're going through permitting right now, uh, going through testing uh, to ensure that what's been is there is working for us and will deliver what we want to deliver. Uh, we are optimistic based on discussion we had today that in the beginning of this fiscal year we should have a plan running and operational. Uh, that should not have an impact on the budget. I think uh, uh, what we had last year uh, was a combination of I think a couple of years of, of packing and putting away recycled asphalt uh, material and not using it. Now we had to dispose of it because now we couldn't take more. Uh, we believe uh, that with the plan running, and I'm, I'm optimistic with the confirmation we have from the construction managers that everything should be ready to go early 
this coming fiscal year. Uh, but if we hear anything different, Mr. Uh, Chair, we'll come through the first FSR and have a discussion with you. But, but we'll do that before coming to you to give you a status update. Uh, but I'm optimistic based on the discussion we had with our partners in engineering and the contractor. Keith has been working hard on top of it and, uh, and working with the team in engineering. Uh, and I think I'm optimistic. I feel much more comfortable that this is going to be ready to go early next fiscal year. Very good. Anything else, members? All right. Thank you very much. And next at Mr. Blumenfield's request is sanitation. Thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, there's a surplus of 731000 because of the delay in hiring of the HOPE team staff. Uh, and just wanted to get your sense of, of why, why that's happening and, and what can we do, because it's a critical hire for all of us to get that going as fast as possible. What can we do to help make sure that, that, that we don't have those kind of surpluses because we need that money to be spent? Can you repeat the question real quick? So in, in the Bureau of Sanitation, there was a $731,000 surplus because of a delay in hiring the HOPE team. And so I wanted to get a sense from you of why that's the case and, and what we can do to help because we're very much interested as a council. I certainly speak for myself and I think I speak for my colleagues in, in making sure that not only is that team, hope those HOPE teams fully funded, but they, that they're moving as fast as possible. Okay, yeah, um, the biggest problem we have encountered over the last uh, year while we fill these positions is uh, a lack, lack of uh, certified lists of hirees. So we recently went through the RCTO list. Originally it had about 240 people on the list. Uh, we just finished this list and, and exhausted everybody on the list and are going out for a new list. The, the, the gaps in time between the time the list expires and the time we create a new list creates vacancy problems. Um, we actively use uh, exempt hiring processes, but they are all background checks and, and, and processes that go into those extend the time it takes to put the people on board. So it, it's, it's, and we're currently working with personnel right now to, uh, you know, start the process before the other list expires so we can have continuous lists. So we, we foresee going forward that this, uh, these, these gaps will end and we'll be able to be continuously hiring. But as you know, that the hiring process does take time. Yeah, I just, just pointing out because this is one of those areas particularly we just don't. We, we want to be fully staffed. But. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's not your issue, but that answer is a little maddening to, to me and I think all of us because we've been he hearing a variation of this answer from just about every department for many years. And the idea of having overlapping lists doesn't seem that complicated to me to fix. So. Um, is anybody from personnel here who can actually respond to that? I, they already left, so we'll take that up separately. But as I understand it, the additional complication you have with HOPE team hiring is the um, high level of um, <laughs> the high level of training that some of these positions require. Um, need environmental degrees and so on to be able to accompany the HOPE teams, and. I still don't feel satisfied that I, I don't feel confident that um, we've exhausted every um, option for constructing the teams in a way that doesn't require so many highly trained personnel to participate in the teams. And, you know, I, I'm wondering if we couldn't have the, the highly trained environmental engineer in more of a supervisorial capacity and use using targeted local hire or other programs like that, bring in people who act under their supervision um, to be able to get our HOPE teams on the streets more rapidly. Um, have, you, have you explored those sorts of options to try to find ways where we don't have to have, you know, the person with the master's degree in environmental engineering or whatever it is going out to clean up the sidewalk. 
I would be, I'd be hesitant to respond to that because I'm more in the facilities planning groups of, of that, and I'm not actually in the clean streets. I would defer that to Pepe Garcia um, on the structure of the ECIs they use the, uh, uh, for the, the cleanups. But I can speak for the RCTOs because I do employ those. That's, that's a class that we've had struggles with okay. uh, maintaining. Actually, sanitation has been working with personnel to try to develop kind of like a bridge class that would allow um, uh, like a lower level uh, type of position to go into an ECI type position so that they can, you know, fill that position and do that work. As sort of an apprentice or trainee Correct. kind of. I see that's, I, I think it's important that we move in that direction because this is not the dream job for somebody who has, you know, a master's degree, you know, in this area. And um, I think we'll have a lot better time, uh, a lot easier time filling those positions if we adopt that sort of a model. So I would certainly encourage full speed ahead in, in thinking a little outside the box on that. Anything else for sanitation members? Okay. Um, all right, thank you very much. Uh, next, at Mr. Blumenfield's rec request, is transportation. Thank you. It's kind of a narrow question, but the, um, the DOT has a surplus of $7.9 million across all the accounts. Could this money be used to fund all traffic signals that are on hold throughout the city? Could it be used for something to that effect? Angela Berman, LADOT. Um, the $7 million surplus is comprised of numerous funding sources. So uh, off the top of my head, I think that partially we could move some of that money into construction, but not the entire seven million. I would have to get back to you on the, on the breakdown. Yeah, I would just look at it because we, we have, and as will be illustrated in some of the other cases we hear today, these signal installations are costing us a ton of money and liability. And uh, we have this surplus. So just trying to put two and two together and figure out how we can make four. Um. <laughs> Roy Cervantes, Office of the CAO, of the 7.9 that was pointed out as the surplus, five point, about 5.4 of that is in the salaries general account, and of that, about 800,000 um, was projected to be general fund. But that was. I think the 5.4 million is comprised of several different funding sources. Correct. Other correct. Funding. So we would have to sit down with the CAO and figure out exactly what those funding sources are and come back with a recommendation. Okay, great. You could do that. That would be wonderful. Okay, anything else for DOT members? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. And next is finance. Field. So just a quick question, I've been sort of harping on something I harp on all the time, which is trying to get the cash out of the cannabis to help you guys out with that issue. So let me ask you this question. The transfer of 215000 for security services at the business tax revenue processing centers, why do we need that? That is for expenses that were incurred in the current year for business tax renewals. Is it related to security, <laughs> to security services? It is. Those are two LAPD officers that we paid for during the renewal period. And what, why do we need extra LAPD officers? Um, those officers are related to cannabis. For, it's not cannabis, but it's cash, cash counting. Correct. Like we have all this cash coming in, so this is just part of what the cost is for uh, dealing with all of this extra cash. Is that right? Yes, and that's just a, a transfer for the last two months of the year, I believe. Okay. Just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Do I have any ideas about things we <laughs> might be able to do? But... All right. Uh, that's it. Anything else for finance? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next is animal services. 
And we'll start with Mr. Kretz. Good afternoon. Mr. Gretz. Yeah, just one question. Uh, we're transferring $425,000 from the Animal Sterilization Fund to the General Fund. Can you tell us why this is happening and what the impact will be on surgeries that we were hoping would be scheduled for this fiscal year? Tammy Watson, Department of Animal Services. Um, the transfer of the $425,000 will be used to cover the related costs for salaries. It will cover um, outstanding reimbursements from fiscal year 2017 and 18, and then this current fiscal year 18, 19. Um, the impact that it has on the animal sterilization fund would be that um, the, that would be fewer surgeries that we can perform or we can um, cost that we can pay for those surgeries when we use them for um, salaries. So presumably that would increase our animal overpopulation in the city and lead to uh, increased costs. So how did, how did we find ourselves in this situation where we needed to uh, transfer this money out? Uh, Brian O, Office of the CAO, that money wouldn't directly impact the number of surgeries for this current year. The fund is actually projected to end the year with a $1.1 million surplus. Uh, as far as funding level for 1920, uh, the account was, or the $1.1 million was taken as the starting base for the 1920 fiscal year, and the sufficient funding was provided for um, the upcoming fiscal year as well. So we don't think it'll actually have a a noticeable impact on uh, the number of animal sterilizations that take place in this fiscal year and next fiscal year. Th that is correct, Council Member. Okay. Thank you. I, I just want to follow up on that a little bit more because every single year there's a shortfall in the sterilization trust fund. Every single year. And every single year we backfill it um, to try to make sure that we don't have to cut salaries. So there's now a one million dollar plus surplus it projected for the year end in the in the trust fund if so why is that why haven't we done those sterilizations well the past two fiscal uh, years uh, general funding wasn't provided and that was um, to kind of uh, draw the fund down as you're stating to bring that surplus down um, the next fiscal year our projections is the first fiscal year when we are when our office is projecting a deficit which is why we put a portion of um, five hundred thousand dollars into the UB to so that the department can utilize those funds in case that shortfall does come to fruition um, so as far as why we this is control basis or why historically it has been um, funded as a surplus I think there was Dif discrepancy in no, 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 between no. the projections? Not, no, no, I'm not asking about the historical information. I'm asking mm -hmm. for this year. We have a $1 million plus surplus in the That's fund. Right. So the question is, why weren't more surgeries done? Why weren't more vouchers handed out? Why wasn't the money spent? The, the vouchers, we're paying out. I mean, we're funding every voucher that we receive, and we've increased our advertisement and um, for it to try to um, generate more vouchers. But, so we're, we are able to pay out all that we're receiving. Now, we do have new campaigns that we're going to be doing this year and next year to increase the community participation in the vouchers. Okay. So how does the amount budgeted for the, for the trust fund in this current fiscal year compare to the projected budget for next year? Do you know that offhand? In terms of number of surgeries, that Mr. Kratz, I don't. Yeah, in terms of number of surgeries, I believe we. No, no. Are, in terms of dollars. In terms of dollars, how much more additional funding is provided? I guess where I'm going with this is, if we've kind of maxed out our ability to get people to do sterilizations by handing out vouchers, and we still have a million dollars left in that account, that informs what we should be spending in the next fiscal year. And yet, I, I remember distinctly, at least for the last three or four years, every single year, including the discussion that we had just had a 
few weeks ago in budget and finance about the trust fund for the coming fiscal year is that there would be very significant shortfalls and that we wouldn't be able, we would have to turn down surgeries and we wouldn't be able to do as much sterilization as projected. And that just seems wholly inconsistent to me with the idea of having a million dollar plus surplus. So I, I'm, help me to understand why that is not completely inconsistent. Uh, I think in terms of surgeries, the number of surgeries aren't maxed out. Uh, but for next fiscal year, the department is actually uh, projecting an increase in the number of surgeries. And the department is also projecting to do another free month of sterilization, which would impact, have a fiscal impact to the, uh, have a fund there as well. Okay. So I think to, to, to short, I'd like to let Mr. Kret speak first. Sure. Um, I'm under the impression that there's going to be a more aggressive effort to uh, do more spay and neuters in this fiscal year. Well, so I certainly I, hope so. I, I hope so, too. I would expect there to be a, a very limited amount of money at the end of this fiscal year as a surplus. Councilmember, if you remember, at several years back, we had actually had an overly large surplus annual trust fund, and we have been spending it down by sort of aggressively, and I give the department credit for that, aggressively spending it down, which is why we're now at the point that the trust fund will not pay for all the work. We're going to have to add general fund to help keep the work going. It used to be the trust fund, quite frankly, had too big of a balance. Um, and now that balance is gone. So the, all the balances you've been worrying about, we're not going to have, we're going to have to find general fund to do this important work to supplement the trust fund on an ongoing basis. Okay. All right. All right. And if, and if I can just confirm with um, Council Member Caret said, we are doing an aggressive campaign for the next fiscal year. <coughs> and with the animal license canvassers, we'll be having more community outreach and education for spay and neuter surgeries. And so we anticipate an increase in the next fiscal year. Okay. Okay. Very good. Members, anything else? All right. Thank you very much. Mr. Kretz, you're done? I am. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Mr. Price requested BOE. I, I think we've got our question. Got resolved. your answer? Yeah, okay. Then um, I'd like to ask street lighting to come up, please. Okay, so um, this $4.3 million um, in reimbursement, um, I understand that was a sort of a technical system kind of error that was made, but I'm struggling to understand how that big of an error could be made, and I want to get a level of confidence that this is not something that is systemic that we should be concerned about having to keep an eye on or audit uh, going forward. So tell me more about how that came about. Good afternoon. Norma Sahakian with the Bureau of Street Lighting. Um, when the new FMS system came on board about two years ago, um, there was a system put in place that basically caused a double billing to our warehouse. Um, what happens is that basically our fund pays for the purchases of the material that are stored in the warehouse, and as it goes over the counter to the crews, there was an actual double billing in the system. So we've been meeting with GSD in order to make sure and see how we can resolve that issue. But in the meantime, at the budget hearing, um, there was an amendment that was put in at the end, basically to take all of our operating money to purchase materials and put it into I'm our... I'm sorry, hold on one second, please. Okay, go Basically ahead. what it did was it took all of our... Um, funds that purchases the materials and put it into our 347 account or 347 fund. And what that did was if, as, as we resolve this issue with the double billing, um, it will inoculate the general fund from any future problems. Okay. Um, but I, I guess what specific steps are we taking to make sure it's not happening in this area or other areas with the FMS? So we've been meeting with uh, GSD on, a, on several occasions in order to go over how their FMS system works and in order to see if there's a way that we can work within the FMS system to make sure as that 
transaction happens over the counter to our crews that there's not a billing. There's a couple solutions we're talking about. Um, we're hoping to get to some kind of solution in the next couple of months. Okay. Well, I think we're going to have to have a report back to this committee on the progress that's made in resolving that just to ensure that sure. this isn't going to pop up unexpectedly in some other area. So um, let's, let's plan for a report back in, say, 60 days uh, on progress on that. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, that's everything on my list, members, unless um, you have anything further. Okay. So uh, then we've already uh, indicated what the proposed amendments are from the CAO and the CLA. And with those amendments, um, is there any objection to going ahead and approving the FSR? No. All right. Seeing no objection, then it will be the action of the committee to approve the FSR with the, uh, the CAO's recommendations and the uh, amendments indicated. That will be the action of the committee. All right. Um, so that uh, concludes our open session items. We'll now proceed into closed session. All right, um, we are back in open session, and uh, on item number five, members, which uh, we considered in closed session, I would recommend that we amend the contract with outside counsel by increasing the funding by $200,000 for an amount not to exceed $985,000. And if there's no objection, from the committee, that will uh, be the action of the committee. And then on item number six, I'd recommend that we authorize the city attorney to enter into a contract with Orbeck, Huff, Suarez, and Henderson, funded by the project applicant in an amount up to 135000 uh, that we authorize the city attorney to execute a reimbursement contract with the project applicant pursuant to which applicant agrees to pay the reasonable costs and fees of outside counsel in this matter, and that we authorize the city attorney or designee to prepare controller instructions for any necessary technical adjustments subject to the approval of the CAO and authorize the controller to implement the instructions. Um, is there any objection to acting? Accordingly, if not, that will be the action of the committee. That concludes item five and six, uh, and that concludes our agenda items. Uh, brings us to general public comment. Mr. Previn, please. Um, those were the, that was item five and six you were dealing with there. Those are the ones you. Read out? Yes. Okay. That's interesting. Um, Angela Merkel, the, you know, German leader, was at Harvard 
over the weekend giving her commencement address. And she talked about how in Eastern Germany when she was growing up, she was mired in despair about the fact that nothing was changing, that it was, seemed, everything seemed unalterable. Um, and of course, from her perspective, she was able to get out and change. I make the analogy that there's a, it's a tough time in the city of Los Angeles, even though some suggest we have the best budget ever. We have you know, a widening gap between folks who can't uh, hang on and folks who have more and more and are getting the, res the right to develop more and more expensive stuff. Um, you know, I would just ask that when we move forward with these legal settlements that we come into compliance with the law because today for the first time we sort of heard what you're thinking, but we never hear that at City Council and we're going to be challenging that protocol, but thank oh, you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Spindler. So anyway, now you've done it. You know Mr. Price, right? You know what happened. See, this is what happens. You shouldn't do what you did. But you did it. Now, see, you can't even look at me. See, that's the problem when you play the games you play. You got to look your opponent in the eye and congratulate your opponent when he gets a win. I do it with you. So you're playing a game. You don't know what the rules are to the game. You think you do, but you don't. See, what are the rules? The rules are win. You lose one, you lose them all, and now you lost. You're going to be hearing from Homeland Security, I predict, in the very near fucking future with that shit. Brandenburg versus Ohio. Oh, how far is the nigger going? Yeah, Price. This is what we're going to do to the niggers. We're going to put a giant red dot on my paper, you dirty nigger, and send the Jews back to Israel under 42 U.S.C. 1983. So Let's the give them back to the dark garden and save America. Let's go back. Let's go back to the embitterment of constitutional betterment. Bury those fucking niggers. Bury those fucking you're outside niggers. Of, you're outside of the jurisdiction of this committee. I'm speaking on general public comment. It's not within the US jurisdiction of this committee. You're this is not an agenda. I am not you're disruptive. The meeting. We intend you are, to do our part. You are, Give us back our rights. You are instructed Freedom to sit down wife. silently. Freedom from the wife. You're disobeying my instruction. Mr. Spindler is disrupting the meeting. He's excluded from the meeting. Sir, don't touch me. You're not going to touch me. I'm moving. Don't touch me. Don't touch you. Yes, he was. Yes. Oh, did I say Mr. Spindler? Sorry, I meant to say Mr. No, Mr. Spindler was not. Mr. Herman was. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Spindler. All right. Uh, with that, we are adjourned.